so reporting live from China where we actually came to drive the GWM Tank 300 but besides the Tank 300 we are also driving this car the Haval H6 hybrid basically an HEV now we first saw this car in Malaysia sometime in the year 2023 but right now we are seeing what is probably the full production model now let me just take you for a quick walk around I can't really drive this car because foreigners are not allowed to drive in China um, and our Malaysian licenses are not recognized here and neither our international driving license. So what I can do is take it for a quick acceleration. You can see that guy just accelerating the hell out of the car for a sort of drag race of sorts just to have a feel for how, the, how hard the car accelerates. I'll get to the power figures later but right now I just want to sort of show you how this car looks like. You get matrix LED headlamps, you get this diamond encrusted front grille, you get this radar at the bottom there because this car comes with a full ADA suite such as adaptive cruise control and such, 19-inch uh, wheels. It's obviously a very good looking car, there's no doubt about it. There's not an angle that is out of place. Uh, so, more cameras here since it has a 360 degree camera, the works, right? And then, if you come to the back over here, I really like... I don't think it's on right now, but I really like how good it looks, this LED light strip. I think uh, GWM has really refined its lighting technology. And uh, all in all, it, it's a good looking car, there's no doubt about it. And uh, it's supposed to be launched in Malaysia sometime towards the end of 2024. Now though, I want to go explore the interior and show you how it looks like and hopefully take it for a short drive if there's time. Let's do this. Loyalty programs are great, but don't you just hate it when you lose the card or you forget to bring it and then you end up losing out on all those points? Well, BH Petrol has an ingenious solution to it. Rather than coming up with a card, they have launched the BH Petrol e-card application and it's available in both Android as well as for iPhones. What this does is you basically pour as you normally would, pick up the receipt and simply scan it. You get one point for every liter that you spend. And it has a lot of exciting products that you can actually trade your points in for. Right now, with BH Petrol's e-card loyalty program, I don't have to worry about losing my card or even losing out on my loyalty points. Making BH Petrol's e-card loyalty program the right choice. H6 HEV, well, it's a very nice interior. There's no doubt about it. The seats look good. They're big and comfortable. Uh, I think they're heated and ventilated. I'll find out shortly. I'll confirm that shortly. There's just way too much gold for me. Uh, for my personal preference, there's just too much of gold. It looks like, you know, West Coast Customs worked on this interior. I do like the design of the speaker grills, everything. Feels nice. The glass is nice and thick, so refinement should be impressive. And uh, you get massive digital screens, 12 point something inches here, 10 point something inches there. Typical of modern cars, right? And I think the seats are ventilated. I feel cold air being blown onto my back. And uh, so yeah, they are ventilated, there you go. Now oh, these are the, this air conditioning. Yep, they are ventilated. So anyway, bit too much of gold here as you can see way too much gold but it looks good depending on whether you like rose gold or not and you get this rotating dial gear knob and a charge pad over there you get a multi-layer storage cubby bins usb port there and uh, obviously electronic parking brakes more storage space here you get this full size panoramic roof very cool very nice 
it is basically a very nice place to be in. And uh, you also get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the works, right? Quality feels good. And basically, all in all, feels like a very nice interior. Now this, when it's launched in Malaysia, will uh, take the fight to the likes of the Proton X70, the Honda CRV, the Mazda CX-5. And uh, whether or not it will make life difficult, I don't think Honda CRV should be worried. Proton X70 needs is in no urgent need of an update. So yes, Proton should be worried. But the rest, uh, Mazda CX-5 is smaller, but uh, we all know how that handles. Check out my review of the Mazda CX-5. I have uh, the previous generation CX-5 at home, uh, but the current generation, the new model is just so nice. And uh, let's just go take a look at the back seats. Nice and big, spacious, isofix mounts. Now, I like this type of isofix mounts. They, they don't have any covers on them, so it's very easy to just plonk your seat in. And uh, let's take a seat. You get ball switches. I know kids will have a gala time with them. Just annoying whoever it is that's sitting in the front seat. And you get your USB ports over here, Type A USB ports, ventilation, uh, air conditioning vents. It's basically a nice place to be. There's no doubt about it. Even the dis the design of the interior is super nice. Um, spacious as well. Uh, I think the Proton X70 is probably slightly more spacious. The Honda, the new Honda CRV is definitely more spacious, but. I just got no complaints as far as spaciousness goes. It's still a very comfortable place to be. Let's see what's over here. It's probably just cup holders. Yep, just cup holders. No dramas. Quality is nice. I mean, besides the rose gold, quality is nice. Let's go see the boot. I really like this LED light strip. I really like it. Looks good. Space, small space. Um, that's probably the battery over there. You get a, a pump, a air pump for the tire, so there's no spare tires. And uh, the seats fold flat. At least you get a tonneau cover. This is very important, at least for me. And more cubby holes here. So space, a lot of space, which in my books is very important. Now let's go see if I can score a drive. Alright guys, so I managed to score some real time with the H8, H6 uh, HEV. So just a little bit about the powertrain of the car. It's obviously a hybrid powertrain. At the gist, at the center of it all is a 1.5 litre turbocharged engine that by itself makes 150 PS and 230 Newton meters of torque. But it has a backup electric motor that contributes a further 177 PS and 300 Newton meters of torque for a combined system output of 243 PS and 530 Newton meters of torque. So power is obviously there uh, and all that power is actually transferred to the front wheels. But what is interesting about this powertrain is that it actually has a two-speed dedicated hybrid transmission sounds complicated but it actually works very much in a similar fashion as the Honda eHEV hybrid models in the sense that during normal trend, during normal operation it is the electric motor that provides pro propulsion so and at higher speeds that's where the engine takes over and provides even more power so how does it decide well the system is intelligent enough to actually decide whether it is the hybrid motor or the engine that should provide uh, power. Now though, I'm just really eager to feel how that 530 Newton meters feels like, should be fun. From the offset, you are basically feeling nothing. This is because it is the electric motor that is, that is powering the car. So refinement is very impressive. We are going over some cobblestones over here 
um, of course this as I've explained we are in China so you really can't take it to your normal to the normal roads we have to drive these these cars on dedicated roads or private roads and such so just crossing this small river crossing yeah I said river crossing <laughs> did anyway so from here I'm going to come to a stop to actually feel that 530 newton meters of torque this should be fun anyway here we go be a wheel spin traction control it's just yeah it's very similar to a honda powertrain uh, it's very refined as well there's no it does it's a very gentle push in the back and power delivery is of course instantaneous the thing about hybrid powertrains is that there's no lag no lag in the sense that hybrid uh, internal combustion engines there's always maybe about half a second or one second of lag depending on whether it's a naturally aspirated engine or a turbocharged engine so anyway power and refinement is obviously there but this car is not designed to actually entertain you with bursts of power it's designed for efficiency and is defined it's 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 created for fuel efficiency so let me just park this car somewhere and i can tell you more about it especially fuel consumption so on regular roads right now I think the suspension is doing an excellent job at just isolating the cabin from the harshness of everything underneath. You can imagine living with this thing. I mean, spaciousness is there, quality is decent. You got no complaints actually. Of course, there's gossips, there's rumors about this car actually being um, having been earmarked for local assembly in Malacca. I'm going to ask the guys at GWM later and tell you more about it shortly. So what I'm feeling right now is just very little vibrations. I'm guessing this is the hybrid system just sort of humming away in the background. Okay, so that's gone. And right now this is 100% electric motor. It's very quiet, it's refined and it's very impressive. I do see something for a heads-up display, but it's probably um, not turned on or not specified in this car. But yes, it does have a slot there for heads-up display. Anyway, power delivery, amazing. And I think this, this seats are ventilated as well. I've got no complaints about the car. I'm just not sure about this rose gold. There's just a bit too much of gold in here for me. So anyway guys, my first impression of the GWM Haval H6 HEV soon to be in the Malaysian market and uh, very nice, the design, love it or hate it, I quite like it uh, I know some people really don't like the diamond grille, I don't mind it, it looks really good and I think it has come to define Chinese cars uh, I know Cherry loves these type of grills as well so uh, no, no, no complaints as far as the design goes, in fact Besides the fact that there's too much of rose gold, I really don't have complaints about the car. I wish I could drive it on regular roads, but unfortunately not here in China. So it should be in Malaysia sometime in 2024. And uh, unless Proton urgently updates the X70, which they, I know they're working on already, but it's a facelift, right? So just, just check it out. It looks good. The car undoubtedly looks really good, even from this angle. It, so you got to give them credit how far GWM has come uh, in terms of creating some very impressive cars. So anyway, uh, the future looks very uh, impressive for GWM in Malaysia. I'm glad that they're coming out of the shadows of the Aura Good Cat and uh, because that's, yeah, that's what people associate GWM with in Malaysia. Of course, there's the GWM Canon as well, but you don't see a lot of that on our roads. So you don't hear anything. This is the electric motor working. You really don't hear anything. 
So as soon as it starts to pick up speed, that's where the electric motor will kick in. Uh, sorry, the engine will kick in and just provide more, um, more power. Anyway, all in all, we have Haval H6 HEV, a very impressive car. Uh, this color looks great as well. And uh, as I was saying, should be in Malaysia sometime in 2024. As usual, do consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.